So now in our fourth section of uh, pre-malignant diseases, we will talk about the human papilloma virus, which is the causative agent for the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. And in this, we will talk about the uh, how human papilloma virus can lead to uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and what are the different changes that takes place in the cervical epithelium after infection from the uh, HPV and then how we diagnose cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and how it is treated. So HPV or human papilloma virus is epitheliotropic. Epitheliotropic means it has affiliation for epithelium. It, uh, it likes and it attacks the epithelium. Epi uh, epitheliotropic and plays an important role in the development of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Here, uh, these are some uh, cervical changes. If you see, this is the normal cervical epithelium with the squamous type cells and transformation zone. So this is the normal cervical epithelium. Now slowly, if this is the low, uh, uh, low grade uh, uh, squamous intraepithelial lesion or these slowly now it it's giving rise to a typical type of cells. So here low grade, uh, now uh, these changes are starting. You can see the difference now in the cells. Here the, the base is uh, the same, but now on the top layer slowly, the cellular atypia is starting. Next in the high grade, uh, this now further growth or further uh, atypia is present and then it leads to uh, clear cervical cancer. So cervical changes with the uh, attack of or with the infection by HPV, these uh, the changes in the epithelium takes place and ultimately it can lead to cervical cancer. This is the cervix. Here the lower portion of the uterus is the cervix, this cervix, and then it opens into the vagina. The pathology is uh, uh, the pathology that how the HPV or human papilloma virus, can, what are the steps in which it leads to the development of cervical cancer. First, it attacks the cervical epithelium. Then it's, it becomes uh, latent or it active with viral replication. So one there, once there is entrance of uh, HPV into the cervical epithelium, there is replication of the virus and then it can become latent or it stays there and once the uh, immune system or uh, defense mechanism of the patient gets lower, it starts replicating again or there is active replication. So both types can occur or both conditions can occur. So first it attacks the cervical epithelium or there is active replication of the virus or it can go into the latent phase. Then oncogenic HPV, now the DNA of HPV or human papilloma virus now integrate with the human genome or human DNA. Now upregulation of viral oncogenes. Now replication of the viral virus now slowly encodes the human DNA. So once the viral DNA attacks the human DNA, there is upregulation of the viral oncogene. And then this viral oncogene mainly express the uh, E6 and E7 oncoproteins. 
And then there is, after the e expression of E6 and E7 on coproteins, what they do is now they suppress or they interfere with the tumor suppressor gene. If there is interference with tumor suppressor gene, it's no longer capable of suppressing the tumor, so it can start uh, getting the uh, changes that leads to tumor formation or tumor growth. And then there is host cell immortalization. Host cell immortal. Immortal is means having no death, stays forever. So host cell immortalization. And finally, there is HPV induced neoplastic transformation. So simply, once the epithelium is infected with HPV, the HPV start active uh, reproduction or it can stay there as a latent phase. Latent phase, if the immune system gets uh, low or weak due to certain diseases like cancer, HIV, if the patient is on, uh, on the different drugs that can weaken the immune system, the disease become active again. So it can be active or it can go into the latent stage. Next, the HPV uh, now integ DNA integrate into human genome and it start taking over the human genome and it affects the E6 and E7 oncoproteins and then that affects the tumor suppressor effect of the uh, uh, cells and it can lead to the changes that can cause cancer. So that's the pathogenesis or pathology, how HPV leads to the cervical cancer. Next, diagnosis of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is uh, by cytology. Cytology testing is important. Cells are removed, tissue is removed, and then it is examined for different cytological changes if there are atypical or dysplastic changes suggestive of cancer or not. So HPV DNA testing is useful in cervical screening. Visual inspection with acetic acid, colposcopy, then colposcopic examination uh, is performed if there is abnormal cytology, if there is uh, abnormal cervical lesion, or if there is post postcoital bleeding. So diagnosis is mainly done by cytology study. Cytology study in which cells are removed and then examined histologically or microscopically. Colposcopy is also performed if there is abnormal cytology, then colposcopy is performed. If there is any uh, abnormal cervical lesion or if there is postcoital or bleeding after sexual intercourse, then the uh, colposcopy is performed. This is the picture that gives the uh, view of acetovite epithelium. Uh, after the acetic acid testing, the epithelium become white in color. So acetovite epithelium around the external os. And then this is the um, external os. This is the colposcopic view of the posterior tip of the cervix showing mosaic pattern. This is diagnosis by cytology study and by colposcopy. Colposcopy is more invasive test, extensive test, so it is performed only once the uh, cytology suggests that there are changes that are suggestive of cancer. Then what's the abnormal colposcopy? Usually there is a white epithelium 
acetovite epithelium there are changes that punctuation changes mosaic pattern changes and there are atypical blood vessel these are the atypical blood vessels they are present in invasive cancer so atypical blood vessels other abnormal colposcopic findings is uh, white epithelium after aceto, aceto, uh, acetic acid testing and mosaic pattern as I mentioned before it's a pattern that uh, is, is uh, like uh, created by uh, joining the different pieces and uh, like pieces of marbles, uh, glass, all those and then there are atypical blood vessels that's shown in this diagram diagnostic conization conization is a procedure in which a cone shaped tissue is removed for examination so conization uh, depends on whether we have colposcopy available or colposcopy not available if colposcopy is available then um, uh, only conization is done when there is uh, uh, entire limit of the lesion is not seen like F, once the colposcopy is performed and the entire margins of the lesions are not visible in that uh, colposcopy then diagnostic conization is performed also if the transformation zone is not seen then if there is evidence of micro invasion on colposcopy or cytology also if there is a significance a cervical intraepithelial neoplasia on curettage if there is a normal colposcopy if but with abnormal cytology or biopsy diagnostic colonization is performed if there is high grade lesion then colposcopy not available usually uh, abnormal sphere with healthy cervix if the healthy cervix is healthy but smear is abnormal then diagnostic conization should be performed if there is positive diagnosis of uh, carcinoma in C2, then we perform diagnostic colonization to rule out invasive carcinoma. So diagnostic colonization is the step in which a cone shape remove area is removed and examined depend on whether colposcopy is available or not we do it depending on the different steps depending on uh, if colposcopy is available or not also if there is biopsy report with cytological findings next treatment of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is preventive treatment Pre preventive treatment is hpv vaccines important then delay sexual exposure until the cervical epithelium has gained maturity it's important delay of sexual maturity very common is early age at the ons onset of sexual intercourse so it's important that delay until the cervix become mature or uh, sorry epithelium of the cervix become mature uh, local hygiene use of condom is very very important uh, any uh, maintain penile hygiene and quit smoking so these are some preventive uh, uh, methods for prevention of the uh, uh, cervical cancers or cervical neoplasia definitive treatment is observation with repeat smear and colposcopy uh, local ablative method ablation is by cryotherapy 
cold coagulation, electrodiathermy, and laser vaporization. Co cryo is cold, so cold therapy, electrodiathermy, in which heat is used, and by la laser. Excisional methods in which the uh, neoplasia or lesion is removed is by large loop excision, cone excision in which cone-shaped tissue or area is removed, and hysterectomy, removal of the uterus. Hysterectomy is the removal of the uterus. So all these are the excisional methods in which the area or tissue is removed. Then ablation of the local lesion, ablation device. This is the ablation device and ablation is performed by destroying the tissue. The entire lesion is visualized within the transformation zone and then no evidence of invasion, no endocervical glandular involvement. No discrepancy in cytology, colposcopy, and biopsy report. Then methods for ablation is by cryosurgery, cold uh, coagulation, electrodiathermy, and carbon dioxide laser. So ablation is here destruction of the tissue, but it's important that there is no invasion of the neoplasia before ablation is done, because uh, if there is invasion, uh, ablative therapy is not usually effective. What are the con some contraindications is important that if a uh, patient is pregnant or if the patient wants to become pregnant in future, it's important that we should not do uh, ablation therapy because it can cause destruction of the tissue, destruction of the endometrial tissue also, and then uh, further chances of getting pregnant are very uh, minimized there. Large loop excision of the transformation U, uh, zone here. This is the uh, abnormal cells and this is the cervix. And loop, loop is the, it's a wire shaped uh, uh, instrument that is inserted and the it goes over the lesion and the lesion is removed and its abnormal cells are removed. So loop excision of the transformation zone. Then hysterectomy is the removal of the uterus here. The whole uterus is removed. It's not the uh, uh, tubes and the ovary is not removed. They are preserved. So only uterus is removed, hysterectomy. So that was all about the HPV and how the HPV leads to cervical cancer and how the cervical cancer is diagnosed and treated. Thank you for watching Scardia.com.